Kenneth Gibson to be followed by Willie Rainey. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Following that speech, I speak more in uh, sorrow than in anger. <laughs> what we hear from the Unionist parties is a condemnation of Scotland and a use of language which deliberately tries to undermine uh, Scots' self-belief in their own country. They talk about separation, but we in the SNP don't want to separate. We actually want to participate in the United Nations, in the European Union, and indeed the institutions of the world. No one talks about their separation day. They talk about their independence day. And many people from across the chamber have talked about working in partnership. We, have, we want to work in partnership with the rest of the United Kingdom, but why can't we do that as an independent uh, country? We are not an equal within the United Kingdom. We are a subsidiary part of it, and we wish to change that. Now, what we've actually seen, actually, uh, over recent weeks is a, a, a Labour Tweedledum and Tory Tweedledee leading to a shotgun marriage between those two parties and their wholly owned Liberal Democrat subsidiary dedicated to holding Scotland back. At the very first door I chapped in 2006, Mr. Gibson's not giving selected, way. I will give way in time, but not at this point, uh, Presiding Officer, and I'll decide who I give way to. Uh, uh, when I was selected as candidate for Cunning North, an early gentleman told me he wouldn't vote SNP with Scotland because Scotland was, and he actually used these very words, too, peer, too poor, too wee, and too stupid. Given Scotland's phenomenal contribution to every field of human endeavour, from the Scottish Enlightenment to science, medicine, engineering, etc., only a deliberate and determined effort over decades by the North British parties could have led to Scots having such an appalling view of their own country. And indeed, I recall my own education, wherein not a single Scottish achievement was lauded from primary school to higher in the 13 years I spent at school. Nevertheless, Scots have become increasingly irked by the no-you-can't position of unionist politicians. The situation has morphed into one wherein even the most desperate of unionists no longer try to compare a future independent Scotland to Albania, Bangladesh or Sudan as once was, or say we couldn't visit our grannies in England, or see Coronation Street post-independence, because we've had all these thrown at us over the years. Although a few of those off-message have made daft comments, ranging from England might have to bomb Scotland's airports to prevent a terrorist takeover, and there will be no NHS post-independence, to a more subtle, of course Scotland could be viable, but London knows best. Senior politicians from all three London parties, including our Etonian Prime Minister, have had to admit in recent years that Scotland has the ability to stand on its own two feet and be a viable independent nation while at the same time trying to sow self-doubt and scaremonger. The next two years will be an exciting time for Scotland, and I'm confident the debate will capture the attention and the imagination of people, and indeed the eyes of the world will be and already are upon us. And the Finance Committee, we, took, we actually took evidence from the Lloyds uh, Bank of Scotland, who said that more people are actually interested in Scotland than ever before, partly because of this uh, debate. The Yes Cap will win, and Scotland will once again re-emerge as an independent, sovereign nation, why? Because we will set out our positive vision for a nation which will regain power, confidence, prosperity, opportunity, a voice in the world stage and a sense of aspiration, while unionists will fight tooth and nail to undermine our national self-belief and self-confidence. But our message of hope and ambition will trump the unionists. But of course, unionists, although claiming uh, on occasion Scotland may be financially sound, it should be governed elsewhere. Scotland, according to the Prime Minister, is stronger, safer, richer and fairer than the UK. Even cursed analysis of this shows it to be nonsense. Stronger and safer? Trident. So richer? So rich the UK has a national debt of well over one trillion, and is in a double-debt recession, has an annual deficit of 126 billion, of the G20 countries is ranked 19th in terms of growth over the last year. And we now know, and the Labour members so desperate to hold Scotland back should appreciate the Institute for Fiscal Studies has made clear 88% of the cuts will come after 2015 when you, uh, uh, if, if, you're, if Scotland is still part of the Union, thanks to the work of you and your Tory, Tory allies to destroy Scotland's ambition. But with our wealth of natural resources, our educated and talented workforce, strong R&D base, export markets, tourism and world-leading education institutes, we will prosper beyond this gloomy picture. Mr. Uh, Mr. Smith, apologies, I should have let you in earlier. Drew Smith. I just wanted to, to, to point out, I'm grateful for, the, for taking the intervention, Mr. Gibson, but 
Um, you can argue that you want to have a positive debate and then call the leaders of the opposition parties Tweedledum and Tweedledee, then say, then say, and if we don't vote for independence, it'll be your fault and the Unionist parties for doing it. No, Mr Gibson, it'll be a referendum and the people will make their choice. You can't have it both ways. Kenneth Gibson. The difference is we'll put forward a positive position. We will copy Obama by saying, yes, you can. You will say, no, you can't. We are the people who believe in Scotland. You are the people who try to decry Scotland. And that's going to be the difference. And that's why we will say that Scotland can be a better place, an egalitarian place. We will say that Scotland can make a contribution to the world. We will give Scotland a more proge put Scotland on a progressive path, tackle our, our social levels, raise our standard of living, not talk about cutting taxes for millionaires while the poor struggle. We will take on child poverty and deal with it. And I mean, that's the Blairite sitting over there. You should be sitting over there with the Mr children. Gibson, you that's must conclude. You belong. Vote for the motion and vote for an independent Scotland.